In my last video, I went through the method of comparing equations with y equals mx plus c and finding the relationship between a quantity of interest and the gradient or the y intercept so that we could analyze physics graphs. What I'm going to do in this video is take it a step further. We're going to be looking at log graphs, how we analyze log graphs. So it's, the method is pretty much the same, except we've got logs to deal with. So those extra algebraic functions need to be handled. What we'll be doing is looking at three examples. And in each case, we'll start off with the equation. We will derive the log equation from that. And then by looking at what's on the axes, arrange our equation so that we can compare it to y equals mx plus c, and then go through the same process of relating the gradient or the y-intercept to the quantity of interest. <clears throat> okay, so let's just get stuck into the examples then. Equation one is about a vertical mass spring oscillation. This is the equation. Time period is equal to a constant c, which is of interest to us, multiplied by the mass of the mass spring system, to the raised to the power of n, which is also a variable of interest to, to us. Okay, so that's the equation. Let's have a look at the graph to see what's plotted on there. It's always worth knowing what you've plotted on the graph because there are two types of logs that you typically come across in physics. And in this case, L, we're dealing with LG. So LG is um, quite a common shorthand for log base 10. And that's what it means. It means log base 10 in this case. So it's log base 10 of the time period. And on the x-axis, we've got log base 10 of the mass. So we're dealing with log base 10. That means we have to take, derive the log base 10 equation of this equation here. So let's do that. I've written the equation down here so that we've got some space to derive it while seeing the equation. We take log base 10 of both sides of the equation. So that would be... I'm just going to use LG, like I said before, for meaning log base 10. LG of T is equal to LG of CM to the N. Right, now we can employ some log rules to manipulate that equation. So we've got C multiplied by M to the power of N. Note that the N is the power just for M here. So the two terms are c and m to the n here. We can employ log rule 1 here, and that means that log ab is equal to log a plus log b. So we'll do that. All right, so now we've got log c plus log m to the power of n. And finally, we can use log rule 3 here, where we have this power n. Log a to the power of c is equal to c multiplied by log a. So we can take the n down here, so it'll be n log m. Okay. So that's our equation derived. Let's just manipulate a little bit so to make it easier to compare to y equals mx plus c when we put the equations in parallel. We've got log m on the x-axis. So whatever is multiplied by log m is going to be our gradient and so on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this first and then I'm going to write the log c after it. So our final equation will be log t equals n log m plus log c. There's our final equation. In order to compare to y equals mx plus c, let's write y equals mx plus c below it in parallel. Okay, so let's just remember this m is the gradient, this c is the y-intercept, whereas this c is a constant associated with the original equation and this m is the mass. Okay, on the y-axis we have log t, on the x-axis we have log m. So we know that the y variable is log t, 
and we know that the x variable is log m. Okay, so now we can identify what our gradient is, whether it's multiplied by the x variable, which in this case is n, is equal to the gradient. So I'm just going to write that to the side here. Gradient is equal to n. And so we've just identified that. And then log c is equal to the y intercept. So I'll also write that to the side over here. Okay, so it's equal to log c. It's going to make that c a little clearer. Now, since the gradient is straightforwardly equal to n, you don't need to do anything else with that. You would just work out your gradient and state that for the value of n. But here, if we want to work out the value of c, which we would want to, then we'll need to do an extra step of algebra. We need to use the inverse function for log. Since it's log base 10, that would mean raising both sides of the equation, sorry, raising 10 to the power of whatever's on that side of the equation. So that would be c here, c is equal to 10 to the power of the y-intercept. And so that would give us the value for c when we substitute in the y-intercept. So what you've seen is we started with our equation here. We derived our log equation. We then wrote it out in a way that matches what's on the y-axis, what's on the x-axis, so that we've got something we can compare in parallel with y equals mx plus c. We then identified our y variable, our x variable. That enabled us to identify the gradient and the y-intercept. And in the case where you had a log value equal to one of them, the gradient of the y-intercept, we needed to use the inverse function in order to solve for the quantity of interest. That's the process. Let's do another example. Okay, here we are. Equation two. This is about capacitor discharge through a resistor. This is our equation. V equals V0 e to the minus T over RC. And those of you who know about logs and exponentials here will know that where we have e raised to the power of something, the inverse function is going to be a natural log. So yes, this is about natural logs. And you can see that from the graph as well. So our first example was log base 10. This is the natural log, so log base e. Okay, But on the x-axis, we don't have a log value. We have just t. So we'll derive the equation and see what we get so that we can compare it to y equals mx plus c. Natural log there. Let's zoom in. Okay, so here's our equation. V equals V0 e to the minus t over RC. We're going to go through the same process. I won't write all of the steps down necessarily, um, but I will point a couple of things out here. So here's our starting equation. Because of this e to the power, we will need to take natural logs of both sides of the equation. So that's going to be ln v equals ln v0 plus ln e to the minus t over rc. Okay, and a natural log is the inverse function of e raised to the power of something. So these two functions cancel out, leaving us just with minus t over rc. Okay, so we have log v0 is e minus t over rc. Right, so this is our equation. Now we're just going to write it out in a way that, like before, we can compare in parallel to y equals mx plus c. So we've got t on the x-axis, we've got log v on the y-axis, so that log v is fine, we're just going to put the t first. I'm also going to write it out so that everything else here is in a separate term. I'm going to put that in brackets just so it's really clear what's the gradient and what's x. Okay, so what we've got here, log v minus 1 over rc multiplied by t, that's exactly the same as that, okay, but I've just put this in brackets so it's really clear what's what, plus log v0. What would we be trying to find out in, with this equation? Well, c, 
the capacitance. We might have an unknown capacitance. You might have an unknown resistance and you might know C, but let's just go with you don't know what C is and we don't know what the initial voltage is, V0. So we're going to solve for both of those. Let's compare to Y equals MX plus C so that we can do that. Okay, as we already said, log V is on the Y axis. T is on the X axis. So the gradient is minus one over RC. Okay, so that's that. And then log V zero equals the Y intercept. In order to determine the value of C, we'd need to rearrange this equation here. So I'm going to do that down here where I've got a bit more space. Okay, so uh, C will equal minus 1 over R times the gradient. At this stage, I'll just point something out from the graph. Notice that the graph has got a negative gradient. So you have a negative value for your gradient. When you substitute that in here, that minus 1 divided by a negative gradient is going to give you a positive value, so your capacitance will be positive. It's worth noting things like that just to really have a good understanding of the context. Finally, V0. We need to do the inverse of the natural log, which is raise e to the power of whatever's on the left-hand side. So e to the y-intercept will equal V0. So there we go, we have a way of determining the unknown capacitance and the unknown initial voltage. Or you might know the initial voltage, but you can use that to compare to the value that you know you started off with in order to see how reliable your experiment was. Let's do a third example. So this equation is about radioactive decay. Activity equals the initial activity multiplied by e to the minus lambda t. So here, we'd be interested in determining A0 and lambda, the decay constant. Okay, let's have a look at what's on the axes. As you might have guessed from the E in the equation, it's a natural log again. So we've got natural log of A on the y-axis and T on the x-axis. So you'll see a lot of similarity with capacitor discharge. There's the equation again. So let's take natural logs of the equation and compare to y equals mx plus c. Okay, so you can see I just you employed all of the log rules and just wrote the equation down. As you get more practice, you can do things, you can take steps for granted and uh, that makes it easier. Okay, so we've got minus lambda t plus log a zero on the right hand side. Log a was the y variable if you remember, so that's fine. That's the y variable and t was the x variable. Okay, so the gradient is equal to minus lambda, which is the decay constant, and the wind set is equal to log A0. Okay, so once again, we've got a negative gradient on our graph, and therefore, when we multiply the minus one by the negative gradient, we'll get a positive value. Okay, so uh, lambda will equal the negative gradient, Okay, and then the final step here is e to or a a zero equals e to the y intercept again, and there we have it. That's how you analyze a log graph by comparing to y equals mx plus c. And in each case, we started with the raw equation and derived the log equation from that so that we could compare it to y equals mx plus c, and so on. So hopefully that makes things really clear for you how to actually go about analysing a graph. 
Well, I hope this video has helped you and you've got a really good understanding of how to analyze graphs now. Um, if, if it helped you and you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If it could have been better, give it a thumbs down. Tell me why in the comments, what could have been better. And uh, if you want to get some practice, and I highly recommend you do get some practice, I'll put this worksheet onto my website so you can download. Practice is absolutely essential in physics. Uh, hopefully you get to do some exams this year and ace them. So all the best with that and all the best with your future.